Hi. I just finished a new book and I can't lie, Shadow of the Gods, it's low-key fire. <laughs> I haven't been this impressed by a book in a really long time. And do you know what the best part of all of this is? The next one comes out in two weeks. Two weeks. I am so excited. So I thought today I was going to do a little recap slash review sort of thing on Shadow of the Gods in preparation for the next book in the series, Hunger of the Gods, which comes out on the 11th of April. And you can actually pre-order it at Forbidden Planet, link in the description. <laughs> this video is going to be massively spoiler filled because it's a recap of the book. So if you haven't read it already, please go away, go read it. It's really freaking great. So what is Shadow of the Gods about? It's obviously got a very huge dragon in it, or has it? Shadow of the Gods is a Norse based mythology book where they're in this world that's been changed ever since the gods battled each other, destroying each other, and the world was basically reborn from there. This event was called the Godfall, the Godfaller. There's a lot of like made up words in this. I love it. And the world has basically renounced itself. It's come back into life. Humans are now roaming the lands, doing all of the stuff they were normally doing without the gods in hand. But these gods have left behind weapons and bones and their carcasses and it's all part of the world building. There is entire cities that are built inside a serpent god's skull. It's freaking awesome. And the series follows three main point of views. We've got Orca, we've got Varg, and we've got Elvar. Orca is a mother who has abandoned her previous life as a violent warrior and has instead taken up a homestead with her husband and her son. But unfortunately, there is a band of hunters who are stealing children and they come murder her husband, steal her son, and now it's her job to hunt them down and get her child back. Varg is a thrall, which is basically this world's version of a slave, and he has been a slave his whole life. His sister was murdered and he ended up murdering a bunch of people from where he came from and he had to run away. He abandoned his thrall collar and his slavehood and he was picked up by a band of mercenaries slash hunters called the Bloodsworn. And he basically is trained to become this warrior in this new band and we follow him on his journey into becoming part of this group. And finally we have Elvar who is in another band of warriors called the Battle Grim. And whilst these are much akin to the Bloodsworn, they actually hunt down Tainted. And Tainted are people who have the god's blood within them and they're able to summon powers of that god. For example, the bear god, they increase in size, they become stronger. The wolf god, they become bloodthirsty. Or the rat god, they're just basically a traitor. <laughs> so there's your three main characters. And funnily enough, I did not expect this. All three of these characters come to heads at the end and I loved it. I loved it so much. But now we're going to talk massive spoilers territory. We're going to talk about the plot twists and the things we need to recap for book two. So let's start with the Bloodsworn. The Bloodsworn are a mercenary band of Tainted. Every single one of them is tainted. They're secret. They've kept this a secret for a long time and they're keeping it a secret still. They're well renowned as this bloodthirsty band of warriors, but they're not well renowned as being this illegal tainted blood. But it gives them special powers. It allows them to be so powerful. And they've brought Varg into this because he is also tainted. He is tainted with Ulfir's blood. He has the blood of the wolf. And it is explained through the story why he's so blood bloodthirsty and he has these red rages and it was hinted towards but it was a really brilliant plot twist. Also hella people die in this and it's really depressing because some of my favourite characters just get straight up murdered in this. And it turns out at the end of the book that Orca, the mother we spoke about before, is also tainted. Her and her husband were both tainted and guess what? <sighs> They were part of the blood swarm. I actually guessed this like well early in the book and I was very excited when it paid off on the last page. But yeah, they're part of the blood swarm and the leader of the blood swarm was actually Orca's husband's brother. So she is his sister-in-law and now they're probably going to band together to go and find her son who I assume is also tainted. Now let's switch over to Elvar's point of view. Elvar has been on a quest with her band and they're looking for a secret place called Ockerstred. And this is basically 
apparently the life tree version in this story where the gods actually fell in battle for the last time and they're going there because they want to find battle fame and glory they want to steal all of the awesome stuff that is held within this area and they get there they do get there this fabled place that shouldn't be real they get there however there were people that were hot on their tails which is where all the stories intertwine because those children that were being stolen i think all of those children are dragonborn they're dragonborn tainted so they're tainted by the god lick reefer who is the the dragon god that you see on the front of the book and they've all been taken and they're used to summon lick reefer which is this massive dragon god who is now going to lay waste to the land and elvar's group led them there and it's a bit of a shit show <laughs> there's a massive battle and lick reefer escapes and that's where the book ends we have a new god entering the land magic is probably coming back to the land and there's this group of people who are devoted to this god who have set it free and some of the people that have been used to set that free include Orca's son. I think. It's not actually confirmed, but I'm pretty sure. And while this battle is going on, in order for them to stop the Lick Reefer being summoned, we find out that the love interest of Elvar is actually a traitor, ends up murdering the leader of the Battle Grim, and everything goes downhill from there. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of treachery in this book, there's a lot of murder in this book, and there are a lot of really fantastic plot twists, but that leads us into the next book. Lick Reefer is free, the gods are awake, or at least the one remaining god is awake. There's a group of people who are committed to this god who have brought it back. And also the Bloodsworn with Orca in tow, who used to be a Bloodsworn member, and now going to help hunt down her son. And to be honest, I couldn't be more excited. So yeah, I just thought I'd do a little recap of this book that I recently read and absolutely adored. Only because the new one's coming out very soon. But if you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell to be notified every single time that I upload. Let me know what you thought of Shadow of the Gods and if you're excited for the hunger of the gods and if you have any theories. I'm so excited to see where this pans out. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you use my links down below to Forbidden Planet and Book Depository if you want to grab any fantasy books, Shadow of the Gods or any manga and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.